I'm David Gregory, and this is Press Pass, your all-access pass to an extra Meet the Press conversation this week inside SEAL Team 6, a new film about the raid on Osama bin Laden premiering on National Geographic this coming Sunday. I'm joined here in Washington by the director, John Stockwell, and from Los Angeles, the producer of the film, Harvey Weinstein, one of the president's strongest supporters in Hollywood, who, of course, co-founded Miramax Films and later the Weinstein Company. Gentlemen, welcome to both of you. Uh, Harvey, I'd like to start with you just on timing to get this out of the way. I've heard you address this. Here's a film uh, that's clearly uh, favorable toward the president, given his successful raid to kill bin Laden, coming out two days before the election. Was this your call? Well, you know, the, the movie was um, uh, John Stockwell and, and, the, and one of the producers of the Hurt Locker's, you know, call. But I will tell you that I went out of my way, as John will verify, to get a Republican CIA operative at the highest level, a Republican Navy SEAL, and, a, and one of the leading historians in the world who is not American, to vet all the, all the, you know, things in the film. I wanted the opposition to vet it. The president comes out heroic because he makes the decision by himself. You know, Hillary Clinton and Panetta say go, do the raid. Joe Biden and Gates say don't do it. The president thinks overnight, this is in the movie, and he says give me one hour from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. the next day. He authorizes the raid. It's not political. It's historical. I would not do anything political, you know, when it comes to making one of my movies. I feel a sacred trust with the audience. John Stockwell, talk about what drew you to this topic, the drama, how compelling this is, as Harvey says, how historic it is. All of that is evident. And there are other films coming out. There have been books about this. What draws you to this project? Well, I mean, honestly, I was, I was very nervous about taking it on because it's one of those pieces that's, that's very hard to vet. And obviously, we started the process long before No Easy Day came out, long before Mark Bowden's book. Um, but I, I just found it fascinating. We all know the outcome, um, but the behind-the-scenes scene, wranglings that occurred within the intelligence community, uh, within the White House, uh, even within the DOD, uh, were all really interesting to me. And, I, and, and again, to go to the, to the president's involvement, I think... Um, to me, it's unfortunate that, that certain people are unwilling to give the president uh, at least partial credit for, for green lighting the raid, because I'm certain that if, if that helicopter crash had resulted in, in dead Americans, if, if Osama bin Laden had not been there, he, he would be taking the blame, and this election would be much different. There's no question. I, I have talked to senior intelligence officials who worked in a previous administration who have said to me this was an incredibly gutsy call. I think it's so... We see in that clip Mitt Romney say definitively that he would not pursue Osama bin Laden into Pakistan, and it's not worth spending billions of dollars to kill, you know, um, bin Laden. What, what is in the movie is Joe Biden's uh, initial opposition in 2008 and, you know, and other people, Edwards, so many people, and we try to be very fair about that. But Mitt Romney is definitive, and I guess they thought that having Mitt Romney say what he said you know, he would, would, have, would have put it in a political context. But he, and then, then the president's speech is so much different. He said, if we had him in our sights, this is in 2008, he said, I would move heaven and earth and I would do everything in my power to kill him. It is an absolutely tough. You look at, if you were, you know, interviewing commanders in chiefs, as I would for CEO, there's no question you would take the guy who makes the decision and not the guy who's so indecisive. What disqualifies him from actually running the country, in your judgment? Well, I, 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 I take Colin Powell's, you know, point of view. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but you know, when General Powell says that, you know, uh, you know, the president rescued the economy, you know, and when it was failing, Romney never gives him any credit for that, which would be the fair thing to do. The president didn't inherit a healthy economy; he, he inherited a great recession caused by Bush two wars in the previous administration. And also, General Powell talks about, you know, how, you know, that, that his foreign decisions, I'll keep troops in Afghanistan, I won't keep troops in Afghanistan, you know, these indecisive things are not what makes the world go around. And I personally, David, was with David Cameron when Mitt Romney came to London to talk about the Olympics, and he managed to insult the British, the British, our number one ally, by criticizing their handling of the Olympics. David Cameron said in a group of people, and loudly too, he said, Mitt Romney has achieved the, the impossible. He has united every party in England against him.
very close election. What kind of restart would you like to see from this president to have a different effect on what he's able to achieve in a second term if it comes to that? Well, not, not inheriting, you know, a, a recession from the previous administration, and now the economy is stabilizing. You know, I'm a CEO of a fairly large size company. From in '08, we, you know, we were on the ropes. And, you know, now we, the company is wildly successful, and so many of my friends' companies. The market is doing better. Jobs are starting to stabilize. The housing, we're starting to see improvements in the housing industry. I think now let's give him the clean start that he didn't have four years ago, and I think he should concentrate on the economy as a number one priority because we know that his foreign policy keeps America safer at night. He's tough overseas. He's killed more terrorists than Bush did in eight years. So there's no, he's a hawk when it comes to the foreign policy. I just want him to concentrate on the economy and jobs. He had to bail out the auto industry. Now that the auto industry is doing well, let's see what he can do when he's given an even hand.